Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Get Good at Business Facebook group, our business highlights today. Uh, I am Taylor Proctor, your business coach, here to help you get good at business so you can get back into why you got into business in the first place. And I help individuals do that for their businesses through something I call the I Move Method, which stands for Intuition, Marketing, Operations, Velocity, and Execution. And today I have with me Lindsay Mahoski, and she is... Hi an amazing individual who is a social media coach, the founder of Her Hive Social, and the host of Confident Content Creators Podcast. She empowers females entrepreneurs to live unapologetically and show up as their most authentic self online by teaching them how to understand the algorithm so they can level up their social media strategy to attract and convert their dream clients. She is also a Jesus lover, a mom to two ambitious boys, and a corporate nine to fiver. And as we mentioned, she owns Her Hive Social, which is the ultimate hub for female entrepreneurs and content creators who are seeking an authentic online presence. They are a full service agency that offers an array of top tier services, all the way from social media coaching and management to branding, workshops, and more. Their focus is to help women-owned businesses thrive in the digital hive, to empower you to be the queen bee of your business, buzzing with creative energy and connecting authentically with your audience and dream clients. So Lindsay, oh, so excited you're here today. Thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Awesome. So let's just dive right in. I would love to know what inspired you to start Hive or Her Hive Social and how your journey as a social media coach and podcast host has influenced the vision of your business. Yeah, absolutely. And I like to tell people like I did it backwards. I think a lot of people start out as like social media managers or VAs, and then they grow into coaching as they grow their business. And I actually did it backwards. I started out as a social media coach first, then I got my podcast and then now I am into social media management, but I, I wanted something different with her hive social. And I remember very distinctively, I couldn't tell you exact day it was, but I remember the feeling of sitting there and the idea of this hive just came to me because I never wanted to be like the social media manager. Like I didn't want to be the only person mm -hmm. I wanted to build more of that agency structure and have a hive of women around me where everyone is succeeding. Everyone has a voice, everyone has a place. And so this, the inspiration of the hive kind of came together and it, all the pieces just like fell perfectly. It was awesome. I love that. And I feel like when you said the idea just came to you and you saw it in the hive, that's an intuition piece, right? Yeah. So how do you rely on your intuition to shape and guide the strategic vision of your business? Oh yeah. I think, uh, I think we're all more intuitively in, inclined than we think we are. Most of us just ignore it. We think like, oh, that's a bad idea. Or we will let like society determine what is and isn't a right business move. And what I have, um, I call it my God gut. Cause I am, uh, like I said, a Jesus lover. And so I, I like to think of these as like little downloads from God of like, this is what I want you to do. This is the direction that I want you to go in. And so by not trusting my intuition, I feel like I am ignoring like a direct calling. So I like to just kind of go with the flow now. And so when it came to me that like intuition, of like, you should start a hive. It's like, okay, great. And then it's like, you should do this program. And it's like, okay, great. But what does that look like? And so it's like, every time I get those like little pings of downloads, I'm like, all right, let's explore this. Let's, let's dive in deeper instead of just immediately shutting it out. I love that. So how has that like going the flow and the, okay, creating this course or doing this thing here, um, obviously marketing plays a big part in that and having like those hits, how does that support like unique marketing strategies that you're doing as well to mm -hmm. really attract and engage that target audience specifically of women entrepreneurs who I also, I'm going to do this weird plug here, but I also feel like women have really high intuition and don't use it very much. So I love that, like, not only are you using your intuition and those downloads from God in your business, but also working with women and helping them kind of do the same. But that being said, so what are unique marketing strategies that you're using for high, her hive social? Yeah. It's funny that you asked that because I have been told by multiple people that like, 
I need to focus on one thing or my ADHD is getting the better of me. And I'm, I keep like being told that I'm like, you, you need to rein it in a little bit, so to speak. Who was telling and you that? <laughs> I know, right? Like the audacity. Uh, um, yeah. Good thing. Like I have reached a point in my business where I was like, okay, cool. I don't care what your opinion is. Um, but the way that I, with like my ADHD and like getting all of these ideas, work it into my marketing is I have learned that like, it is okay to follow that intuition and to get all of those things. But once you do, that's where the exploration piece of it comes. And there is still a planning piece that goes to it. It's not like I get an idea and I immediately execute it the next day. You do want to make sure that you have the right pieces in place to be able to execute it. But I allow myself that time to explore it. And in that exploration, the creative marketing comes in play too, because it's like, okay, how can I talk about this? Where can I talk about it? Like, what are the cool and unique and different ways that can be that you can share this information. And it's awesome because you can also go into like a little bit of research with that too. And like, what are other people doing and how can I be different and not like everyone else? And so it's really fun when you start to follow that, follow that intuition, because then your marketing also follows that flow. Nice. I love that. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about operations, because once we have the intuition that's guiding and taking that congruent action in our businesses, then we're taking that aligned marketing for those that massive impact. Operational support is the next piece, right? Mm -hmm. um, so describe to us the key operational systems and processes that you've implemented to help the hive run smoothly. <laughs> yeah. So for one, I don't do it alone, which is the whole entire reason why I implemented the hive system, so to speak, is I have a team of girls who all have kind of their own unique speciality. Um, I have a girl who, uh, all her sole purpose is my podcast. Like I, she just edits, um, does all of that stuff. I do have a VA that helps me, but one of the things that's most unique about kind of my, my quote unquote planning process and also like my marketing process is I have a group of women that are kind of like my insiders that I will bounce ideas off of, or I will ask for help, or if I like need them to go share about something or talk about something, they're there to help me. And they, it's really awesome because like my VA is in there, um, my branding girl is in there. And so it's all women who are a part of the hive. And then we have a few others who are just like ultimate supporters of it. And I think that having them as part of the team, so to speak, really changes that dynamic when it comes to the operational thing, because I work a nine to five. I am busy between my family, my business, my nine to five. Like I don't have a lot of time to do all of the things. And so I had to have lean really, really heavily on these women to help me out. Mm -hmm. And now finding the best, most effective operational like communication, I guess you say that is still a work in progress, but at least I know I, I have them and we can grow together. Right. <laughs> I love that. So uh, I want to ask, how has your nine to five influenced your business direction? Right. Cause we've all been there at some point where it's like, you're balancing all of these things and you're trying to take the, their business in a certain direction. Uh, and so it's whether like the nine to five has supported that, like you're learning things and be like, let's apply that. Or it's like, oh, I don't want to do that in my business. Let's, let's go a different way. Like how has your nine to five impacted your business in a positive way? You know, it's funny. Cause like what I do in my nine to five is vastly different than what I do in my business. Um, I am currently an administrative assistant. So I do a lot of like payroll and, uh, emails, scheduling, coordinating, which is a lot of what my VA does for me is yeah. she takes on like that role. And, uh, I knew that because of my nine to five, I don't like doing those things. And so I knew mm -hmm. that in my business, if I wanted to have fun in this, and if I wanted to do it the way that I want to do it, I had to outsource that because it's not a fun piece for me. I don't love it. Same with like bookkeeping. Like I'm, that's not my favorite thing to do. And so again, I, I'm like, okay, you take on this piece, you take on that piece. But 
in my nine to five at one of my duties as uh, the assistant there is I do handle the social media for them and being a social media coach and then handling somebody else's social media, I was always like, I'm not going to be a manager. I'm not going to be a manager. I'm not going to do other people's social media. And then I was talking to somebody at, at my work actually. And they were like, why don't you do this for other people? Like you're really good at it. Like you obviously know because you coach people on how to do their own. And so those pieces like identifying what I did like and what I didn't like as far as like the business side of things and being able to outsource that, but then also like recognizing what I'm good at really kind of like morphed where I currently am in my business. I love that. And I love too, that you said, I, you know, I need to set up the business so that I can have fun so it can grow. And I think that that is one of the key strategies for any like velocity and any growth and being a catalyst to businesses. You have to have fun doing it, right? If there's an energy behind it of like, I hate this, I don't want to do it. Then there's no like, Hey, I'm a business owner. I want to talk about it. Like there's no yeah. love for that. So I love that. So what other strategies besides like, Hey, focus on the stuff that you love doing is fun. What other core strategies are you using to accelerate the growth and reach of for hive social? It's been so awesome lately to recognize the power of my community that I have built. Uh, because as a social media coach, like I think people immediately hear that and they think like algorithms, how to go viral, like all of those things, but that's not what I teach on. I teach on how to create conversations and communities so that you can actually convert through your following. I mean, a hundred thousand followers does not equal a hundred thousand dollars. And you can easily have a small following and make six figures a year. And so my whole coaching has been geared around that building a community. And recently, actually, like in, in like the November, December, I realized how strong my community was because I had a post where somebody was looking for social media management and I counted, I was tagged 12 times nice by 12 different people in that post. And I was like, okay, so what I have been preaching and teaching is actually showing results of like, when you build a community of people, when you genuinely care about them, when you provide value to their lives, when you, uh, like no gatekeeping, you just give what you can, people are going to trust you. And it's been so cool to watch that like month after month, my revenue keeps growing, even though I'm like, well, I'm giving this stuff away for free, but it's like, yeah, I'm giving away for free. But then these people are also hiring me because they see the value in it. Right. And, uh, and then there's the referral bases that are coming from it. And so month after month, I just see, like, I keep pouring into my community and putting conversations and connections first. And my business has been exploding. I love that. And I think that's a perfect time to talk a little bit more about your community because that is uh, one of the resources that you have for our listeners and viewers today. So tell yeah. us a little bit about that community for us. Oh, I would love to. So Confident Content Creators, Mastering the Art of Social Media Marketing <laughs> is uh, my free community on Facebook. And we talk about social media marketing. We talk about um, your business, your dream clients, how to reach them. We just did a 12 days of Christmas back in December and it was like so much fun. We have monthly master classes and uh it it's a really awesome group and it's surprisingly engaged. There is a statistic out there on Facebook that uh of the millions and millions and millions of groups that Facebook has. I mean there are millions. The average engagement rate is only 2%. And most of that's because there's a lot of dead groups that have zero, like absolutely none. They, somebody created it and then they didn't nurture it and it, it goes nowhere. Yeah. So if you take those out of the equation, the average engagement rate is only 15%. My group has an 80% engagement rate. That's amazing. And so I'm like, this is pretty awesome that it's like, we're, we're a tight knit community and people are having conversations. They are asking questions. And so I really, I really like, it's my baby. It's what's one of the things that I absolutely love the most. I love that. And so it's a free Facebook group. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. 
So we have that link uh, in the description so that you can go and check it out and tag along with Lindsay in creating content confidently um, that converts. So I love that. So now let's talk about like, what is the next big thing that you currently have at the forefront for her Hive Social and how are you uh, initiating or executing on that project? Yeah. So with it being the the beginning of January, when we're recording this, Mm -hmm. um, we're all talking about like intentions and New Year's resolutions and things like that. Well, my word for 2024 is connection. And it's more than just, you know, connecting people, but it's, you know, a connection with myself, with God, with others and connecting to people like connecting with you today, helping other people connect to each other. And so I foresee this year being a big networking year. We're going to be having networking events. We're going to be having content creation workshops. There's going to be a lot of in-person stuff as well as some online things that I have planned and really just building those connections on all four fronts. So that's kind of the next big push for her hive social is to help, uh, more with the networking side of things and helping connect people to each other. Oh, I love that. That's amazing. Well, uh, Lindsay, thank you so much for spending some time with us today and for being so candid and upfront about your business and how you make your decisions, your marketing, your operations, really excited for the coming year for you and that networking and making those connections. It's going to be so awesome. And we just really appreciate you coming and sharing about your business and allowing us to learn from you about how we can get good at business too. So really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. And if anybody has wants to reach out to Lindsay, again, the link to join her community is in the description of this live. So thanks so much. And we'll chat soon. Remember, you can get good at business and get back into why you got into business in the first place.